welcome to the Game Dungeon. Today we're looking at Requital, a third-person RPG. See? Requital, Revenge of a Hero. Okay, let's get started. And we get a stat screen with easy listening music playing. Okay. You know, I always get a little antsy having to deal with a stat screen in an RPG right from the start. Because every game has its own funky system. Some do a good job of conveying the importance of each stat, but a lot, I'd say even most, do not. Whoa, whoa, wait, what, what's this? Dexterity. Influences the speed of your attacks, parrying, and blocking. Speed. Influences the speed of your attack and defense. Well then, wouldn't that make it the exact same thing as dexterity? So which one do I pick? See, this is what I mean. So many games do this crap. <sighs> Whatever. Equal points for everything. Start game. So we begin and we get fake widescreen with letterbox bars. Don't be fooled, this is another 4x3 game. I have to say, I always feel defeated when I can't get a game like this to run in widescreen. I was so close. I found the registry settings to change the field of vision. I got the menu to run in widescreen. A hex editor didn't turn up anything obvious. I just couldn't do it. I'm pretty sure changing two or three numbers would convert this game to widescreen, but games are made up of a lot of numbers. So, 4x3 it is. So we begin at- nope, I'm stopping again. Notice how the sky is so bright and vibrant while the terrain is dark as oil? Here, well, a lot of games in the mid-2000s had horrendous lighting, not because of technology limitations, but because a lot of art directors collectively lost their damn minds. See, around this time, graphics technology was able to add a full-screen bloom effect via hardware. So because it was new, developers decided it was the answer to everything. I honestly can't understand how anyone thought this was a good idea. I think this is hideous. I mean, sure, this might be good as a special effect, like looking at the sun or during an explosion, but no, just smear it on absolutely everything and call that progress. Now you might be thinking, oh, well it's easy to judge looking backwards, Ross. No, I hated it then, I still hate it now. It always just looked wrong to me in a way games before this time don't. Anyway, most games have decent lighting nowadays, so we can almost pretend this never happened, but it did. Thankfully, we can mitigate the damage and turn Bloom off, which just leaves us with this depressingly dark lighting for everything instead. I'll try to make this look better in editing, but no promises. I'll probably have to make the HUD too bright to compensate. You just can't win. Okay, so let's begin the game. We start off having a nice nap when some goddess wakes us up and tells us to do the tutorial. New quest, turn the camera. Yeah, let's skip ahead. Okay, so here we are, a new day. The whole world ahead of us in this third person RPG. So take a guess what button I press to move the character forward. W? The up arrow? Maybe a gamepad axis? Well, if you just sat there and guessed nothing, you're correct. Good job. You move in this game by clicking on the landscape where you want to go, like a Diablo clone. That makes sense for those types of games because those are isometric. But this is a ground level game. They're rendering the entire landscape. They don't need to hide anything. Moving forward manually feels natural. Why did they do this? I guess we'll never know, though I will say this has some of the best pathfinding I've seen in a game. Watch me cross this river in the distance with one mouse click. Da -da -da. So we head forward and run into an old sorcerer. Welcome, kind man. Okay. Now, I'm not saying this voice acting was recorded over speakerphone 20 minutes before deadline, but maybe it was. So he wants us to stop a bandit from chopping down a giant tree. What do you want? Sure, I don't know any of you people, but I'll beat the crap out of them. Boom! You've won in a fair battle. According to the martial code, the winner may take everything belonging to the defeated enemy. Works for me. Start stripping. Look, I have pants! Hey! Hey! Yeah, I can kill you two, no problem. Alright, so I have not been playing five minutes and I'm already hacking up some guy with an axe. So whatever problems this game may have, it gets some things right. Yeah, you better run. Next we head on down the road and talk to the boatman. So you know what that means. It's time to talk about Sonic the Hedgehog. 
In 2006, Sega released Sonic the Hedgehog, since that name wasn't taken, and it's become infamous for being one of the worst games made. Well, in that game, some of the vendors talk in this non-stop expressive loop that is just bizarre. Well, Requital came out in 2007, so either the developers saw this and took inspiration from it, or else great minds think alike, because we're seeing that same pattern in all the characters in this game. Huh, Wolfhound. That's a coincidence. All right, well, we head on down the hey. road. Ah! Okay, okay, I'll kill you. Hold your horses. What do you want? Wow, that one might have been recorded with an actual microphone. Okay, time to die. Let's talk about the combat a minute. Like the movement controls, the way combat works in this game is very Dungeon Siege. You see an enemy, you click on him, and that's it. You run towards him and fight him until he dies. There's a delay between attacks, sometimes you miss, sometimes you deflect attacks. I have no control over that. Well, that works for Dungeon Siege because I'm managing a whole crew of people in that game. Here, it's kind of bad, but it's automated. It feels weird to play because I keep feeling like the fighting in this is going to be a chore, but it's a chore the computer does for me. So we'll call it a draw. What is a chore, however, is healing. If you want to heal after a fight, you have to press your heal button. Then you sit down and do yoga or something and slowly regenerate your health. Except you can only heal so many points at a time. So if you want to heal more, you have to babysit it and press the button again. You do get unlimited heals, but this is not fun. We'll talk about this more later. Anyway, I talk to the Bee Master. Welcome, traveler. Hi. I help him with his bear problems, heal some more. Thanks for your help. Right. I fight more bandits, heal some more. I rescue some damsels in distress from a wolf. Get out of my way. Oh, you're talking to me like that? That's tough talk coming from somebody with green hair. Well, at least he had some treasure on him. What's this do? Forest spirit ring, ringwood goblin. Sounds good, I'll take it. From here, I come to a village and talk to the locals. Welcome, stranger. You are welcome, O oh son of a good mother. Welcome again, O oh son of a good mother. Yeah, I think we're done here. I do help them out with their bandit problems, and I have to say, this is a very MMO placement of the bandits. They're not hidden away in their camp, cooking a meal. They're just standing out on mounds of dirt out in the swamp, staring out into oblivion. They look like storks. I guess I better put them out of their misery. Moving on, I fight people, heal, fight people, heal, this healing, ugh. Ooh, and this guy looks like mini-boss material. You are looking to die, What? Wolfhound. What do you want, slave? Do you want to fight What? Uh, yeah, okay. Hey, wait a minute, this is Wolfhound. Yeah, Wolfhound. Now, if you're from Russia, there's a good chance you've heard of Wolfhound, or Volkadov, or however you pronounce it. For everybody else, Wolfhound was, at the time, the biggest budget Russian fantasy movie ever made. It's about a fantasy badass on a quest and wrecking everyone who tries to stop him. I've heard it described as a cross between Conan the Barbarian and Lord of the Rings. I'd say that's fair. Not as much substance as Lord of the Rings, but more than Conan. Conan is honestly kind of a barren movie. I mean, once you've seen the cultist and the snake and the camel, that's kind of it. <laughs> so how was Wolfhound? Well, I think the benchmark for whether you should watch this movie is do you own a sword? As you watch this video right now, is there some sort of sword hanging on your wall or sitting next to your bed or something? If you answer yes, then you have to see Wolfhound. You have no choice, it's your destiny. For everybody else, it's optional. I thought it was a pretty good time. My personal favorite scene is this big fight on a natural arch where it's too crowded, so people go spilling over the side. Now that's a battle. Now I do have to give a disclaimer here. If you hate your job and you watch this movie, you may find the scene where he escapes the slave mine so inspiring that you decide that's it, you're gonna quit your job right then and there. That could be a bad idea, so you may wanna have a plan for that first before you watch the movie. I thought I should warn people about that. So this is a movie-based game. Wow, could've fooled me. 
In fact, it did fool me. I had no idea it was when I started playing. I just thought it was an action RPG that had decent screenshots. Sure, I'll give it a shot. I certainly didn't guess it from the cover. Oh sure, the Russian copy, there's no mistaking it, but I never saw that. Look at the English one. There's some guy who looks like he wants to sell me a counterfeit watch and generic fantasy guy. Repay by good or evil. What? To be fair, the back of the box mentions him, but I just didn't connect the dots. The name Wolfhound is kind of generic. Look, there was even another movie with that title before the good one. But most of all, I assumed if you were making a game about the movie, you would name the game after the movie? Why is this called Requital? I guess it's so that people like me would buy it. They tricked me. Well, I think there's still hope here because the movie doesn't start off like this. I don't think there even was a beekeeper in the movie. So this is a side story with Wolfhound? I guess that works. I'm not ready to abandon ship yet. So let's keep going. We defeat Quiet Guy, fight and heal some more, and then we get to travel to our next zone. The game throws some story at us. I don't care. It's not that I don't care about a good story, on the contrary. But fantasy games especially, I feel like have to earn it with the atmosphere and the characters, and this game's just not doing that for me. The reason I pick on fantasy games is for every story about a special sword and some evil force that wants to take over the land, there are at least a hundred others just like that waiting to be heard. So I need more to go on. The movie gave me Wolfhound beating the crap out of everyone. The game's giving me a lot of healing. So, sorry game, I don't think you deserve a story at this point. And speaking of healing, we have more of that! After finding some henchmen on the road. By the time I get to a pack of wolves, I realize something needs to change. I'm still actually okay with this combat, but these heals are misery. The best way to approach any situation is to get the attention of one or two enemies, run away to separate them from the pack, take them out, then heal. If you just rush in, you might not make it out alive. Yeah, see? Now you may have noticed I do have healing potions, but guess what? They don't actually heal you. Yeah, you heard me right. The healing potions do not heal you. That's impressive, game. You got me there. I don't think I've seen something like that before. So way to distinguish yourself from the pack. What they do instead is give you temporary hit points. So if you pop one in battle, it means you can take some more damage for a few seconds. Once the battle is done, they fade right away. So they are useful, but that still doesn't heal me. All I have is this stupid meditation move. And remember, I have to keep pressing the button to make that work. Now you might be saying, well Ross, if you use the healing potions, you wouldn't need to actually heal so much. That is true, but then I would go through these faster than I need them. Plus, is this the sort of game where I should be saving all of these for a boss fight or a tough battle? I've played games like that before. I don't know what's coming. And just to add to this what the hell was the plan here vibe, you actually do regenerate health slowly without meditating. Okay, here I am after a battle that almost killed me. I'm at 7 out of 92 hit points. I'm just going to walk away from the computer. Let's see how long it takes me to heal that back on my own. That's almost 15 minutes! Jeez, you think that's slow enough? And I'm only gonna get more hit points as I level up. Why even have this at all? Well, thankfully, I can change the difficulty to the game. Now, I don't back down from a challenge if I like it, but I'm seeing right through the mechanics here. This is not an impossible game. The thing is, this isn't really a difficulty selection. It's a question of how much do you want to stare at this animation? This is what it all comes down to, right here. If you would like to stare at this a whole hell of a lot, like a ton, pick normal or hard difficulty. I'm changing it to easy, we'll see if that's enough. Although, you know what's weird? I missed this earlier. If I were to start the game from easy, it actually advances you several levels. I guess that works, but man, that is odd. I don't think I've seen that before. I see this as a confession that the developers didn't know how to balance this game. So this is the band-aid solution. Look, we're giving you infinite heals, you have a difficulty slider, figure it out yourself. We've got other things to work on, like these animations. Anyway, moving onward on easy, we run across some zombies. Ooh, I can't hurt them. I guess I'm leaving. 
Next, we sneak into the castle to kill some guy who's your enemy, but not the main enemy. I don't know. Whatever, let's kill everyone just to be safe. You know, it would be nice if those damn crows would shut up during the battle. This isn't going to stop. So we make it to the boss and it's just some guy in a robe. Huh, this is sort of like the movie, except in the movie he had to scale a cliff, go through this lattice work of bridges. It wasn't really like this. Who are you? A slave? Yeah, not quite the climactic confrontation I was hoping for. Now, exiting the castle, this is where I start becoming glad I switched to easy. I have to face a small army here. This would take forever on normal. Also, since we're copying Dungeon Siege so much, I really wish I could tell Wolfhound to automatically attack the nearest enemy. He never fights back on his own, even if he's hit. That's kind of a problem, because sometimes I tell him to attack a guy, but his path is sort of blocked, so rather than wait 10 seconds for him to figure out how to get to him while he's under attack from somebody else, I click on somebody else. But maybe I miss because everything's moving, and I told him to go somewhere else instead and stop his attack. I really don't like this. Just kill them, Wolfhound. You're making this too complicated. Well, we do kill them, and I save some sort of maiden and an old blind man. Oh, no. This was definitely part of the movie. See? That means we're following the movie. This isn't a side story. <sighs> Let's talk about movie-based games a minute. I'm really the wrong person for these. Any gamer who's been around a while knows they're usually not the best because they need to be rushed to market in time for the movie, and they're kind of soulless. In fact, I don't know how creative types work on them without blowing their brains out, but hey, they exist. But let's pretend we live in a world where they're all great. I still wouldn't want to play most of them. The problem is, I've already seen the movie. I know how the game ends. That sucks the life out of it for me. I'd rather play something original. But even if the game based on the movie has an original plot, they're usually still not going to break the mold too much because they can't contradict the movie's sequel later. So you're probably not going to see Earth taken over by Lava Men, travel to another dimension, see the hero go back in time. I want something that's not afraid to veer off course. To be fair, I did enjoy Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis. That somehow managed to check all the boxes for me, and it might have the best Indiana Jones storyline even compared to the movies. Although I haven't seen the Crystal Skull one since everyone said that was terrible, but yeah, the Fate of Atlantis really holds up. But even then, I haven't played Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade, made by the same developer with the same gameplay as Atlantis. Why should I? I saw the movie! For me to be interested in a movie-based game, it would have to be an original side adventure that doesn't follow the movie, and I would have to love that movie so much I'd rather play it over a more original game, and the movie would have to translate well to being a game, and the game would have to be great also. Or they could just change the title so I don't know what I'm getting myself into. There's always that. I guess I'm in too deep to quit now, so on we go. So now I have new people to come with me on my journey. Yeah, this is gonna be fun. Aren't escort missions the best? If I try to run ahead, the oops, they die. I guess we're doing this the slow way. Thankfully, I get to drop off my sidekicks at a village, which is good because Wolfhound doesn't need more complications in his life. Geez, somebody needs to let that horse out. From here, we can do some side questing, but first, I almost forgot. This game borrows some elements from Dungeon Siege. Can we do the tree trick too? There's a tree. Let's walk towards it. Yep, we sure can. On to side questing, I defend some shepherds being attacked by wolves. They thank me for the help, but tell me there's no reward for helping them because they're poor as dirt. There are a few quests like this in the game. I find this refreshing in an RPG where normally everyone and their mother has either gold or a valuable artifact to give you for rescuing their cow. I'm not sure if this is a good or bad thing, but it gets points for immersion for sure. And of course we visit the witch out in the woods. I feel the human smell. Can't be that a real human came here, not just a forest spirit turned into a handsome man. Hmm. Eventually we do enough questing to progress to the caravan. And buckle up, because we're going for a ride now. Before we start, we get a sort of recreation of one of the scenes from the movie. Yeah, it's just like the real thing. Uh, uh, yeah, dig it. Uh, uh, 
Yeah. After that, the caravan ride. Okay, first, I'd like to point out I am pressing no buttons. The game just drops me right in front of the caravan, which starts challenging the game's physics. I could move, but I'm curious how long this goes on. This happens every time, too. I didn't just get lucky in the recording. Yeah, yeah, there he goes. And now the caravan ride. Our mission is to escort the caravan to its destination. I can't speed this up. I just have to keep walking alongside the caravan. Well, you don't have to suffer through it. I'll time lapse ahead. I'll just say this isn't fun. In fact, this is where I originally gave up on this game. But I'm back again to push through it. It just goes to show wisdom doesn't necessarily come with age. Oh, thank goodness. Something's happening. We're under attack. Oh my god! Try not to panic! So we are under attack, and this is such a mess. I can't tell who's on my side when I'm clicking. It's almost luck if I manage to attack the enemy. Oh, oh! There's my nemesis, and he's calling me out. Oh, I'm coming for you. But first... Yeah, this is a good time to meditate and reflect on life. Alright, let's do this. You're fighting well. What, I've seen. what? Why should you die with the others? Well, Wolfhound has the perfect comeback to this. Remain silent. Yes, remain silent. That is perfection. This gets an award. All right, Shokan, let's go. We'll meet again. Yeah, of course we will. This is a movie-based game. Damn it. So we check back in. We get some more story. Wolfhound, you are alive. Thank the gods. We were worried about you. Yeah, let's just get out of here. And moving onward... What, you thought we were done with that long-ass caravan? Oh, no, no, no. This is just round two. Hope you like walking next to wagons. This one is broken up a little better. We have some fighting, some more hot escort action, more fighting, and more escorting. I do not recognize you. It's cool, it's me. Ah! Ah! And as a nice change of pace, we have some caravan escorting. But we finally make it, and... The caravan seems to have glitched out. I'm serious. You're supposed to meet the owner at the tavern. But I can't talk to him because he's still frozen with the caravan. If I push him, it doesn't help. Okay, I'm honestly stumped here, guys. I thought maybe I have to leave the level and reload it. But now the game won't let me. We'll talk about this map in a minute. This is part of the main quest. I can't progress until this resolves. Maybe there's a hidden trigger I don't know about? So, uh, guess what? I can't figure out how to fix this. We're stuck. Well, even without this glitch, I was still gonna give this the worst caravan award. It may not look like it to your time-lapsed eyes, but this is easily the worst caravan sequence I've played. But the good news, I guess, is I somehow got past this part when I wasn't recording. So I still have my saved game. So we're gonna skip ahead. We're not missing much. It was just this scene from the movie, except not done as well. Just watch the movie. And from here, the game opens up even more. And I should comment that despite being a budget title, this map design is pretty solid. While you still have your overly rounded hills, Parts of this game are giving me an actual forest vibe and make me want to explore more. I like it. Now, of course, it is worth pointing out that this did come out the same year as Crisis, so the graphics aren't quite as developed as that, but I'm guessing their budget was a little bit bigger than Requittles. This game shouldn't have had a bigger budget. Whatever it was, they did enough. And speaking of graphics, you may have noticed this wobble effect on the terrain. I think this has to do with the game taking shortcuts and how it calculates the perspective on the textures. I'm not sure. PlayStation 1 games had a bunch of this sort of thing in order to squeeze more speed out of the hardware. I'm surprised the developers were pulling these kinds of tricks as late as 2007, but then I'm not sure what to expect from this game. But back to exploring, I find wolves and bears living together in harmony. Not on my watch. This isn't natural. This must be the work of my nemesis! And if I turn the corner, I run into at least 20 bandits all coming for me. This is it! This is exactly what I was afraid of! This is why I saved the healing potions! Oh good! Poison arrows! 
That should keep the challenge reasonable. Jesus, they're still chasing me. I actually do like this kind of challenge, but at the same time, it's admitting there's no way you're gonna beat this without exploiting the AI. And I get double lucky on that front. Once they give up chasing me, they really give up. I'll take it. If you can't see me, I must not exist. Anyway, long story short, everybody dies. A lot of these stories end this way. All right, now let's talk about the map. I hate this map. It just randomly lights up when I can backtrack or travel to a new zone. You might think maybe I have to be adjacent to the next area. No, where I am doesn't matter. The roads in between them don't matter. Nothing matters. The game just decides what I can do. So while we can, I revisit the castle I just fought at and it's overrun by zombies. Although now I can kill them since I have the sun flame sword. Yeah, I'm slowly learning. Let's have a quick lesson. Axe doesn't kill zombies. Pointy wooden stick does. Heavy wooden spike club? No. The sun flame sword? Yes. Got it? Good. I also have some assistance now, but just for this level, I don't know why. I don't think they were part of the movie. The movie didn't even have zombies. But when I finally work my way back up and kill everything, nothing seems to matter? There's no special item I need or a cutscene, so I never needed to come here at all? Okay, I guess we're moving on then. The map lets me move south, so that's where we're going. But see that big arrow pointing in the corner? I can't go there. Fuck you, map. Well, this area is nice. You know, it's easy to criticize the zombie castle for maybe being completely pointless, but honestly, I kind of appreciate things thrown in there like that. They leave me wondering. In fact, I'd be fine in a lot of games where you beat a level and move on. If you decided to revisit the levels later, they're all overrun by zombies with no explanation. Some of the appeal of budget titles is everything's a little more wild, so you never really know what's coming. As long as the game isn't forcing you to do something terrible, like a caravan escort, sure, throw in some zombies. That wasn't a problem. We soon come to another village with some more side questing and more of the main quest. Health and prosperity to you, traveler on Toyn's land. Where are you from? Yeah, and except when it's shut out on the map, the game is about as open as can be at this point. Which means I'm not sure which way I should be going, but that's okay. I'll say that the map design of this game is actually one of my favorite styles. It's a linear game, but it lets you wander around a bunch too. It also has a lot of meandering paths that you can explore and check out, but it's not completely open world. I actually prefer this to pure open world since that can often feel a little aimless. Plus the fact that they're willing to say there are places you can't go means they have more focus to deliver a better experience for where you can. Or, at least try to. While the story and characters still aren't winning me over, I'm actually liking the flow of this game a lot. Well, my wandering takes me to the river village. This was in the movie. Just wondering, what is her sister-in-law's illness and how long we'll have to wait for Fern? And from there, I end up in the mountains. And around here is where I discover that an upgraded pointy wooden stick is the answer to all my problems. See, I was trying to maintain a balance between damage and speed with my weapons. No, I should have just gone with damage all the way. If I land a hit, pretty much every enemy is a one-hit kill now. This really is a breath of fresh air and makes me want to keep playing. I've heard when Henry Ford was running his factories, the turnover rate on workers was very high since assembly line work sucks. So he doubled their wages to try and retain them. And guess what? It worked. I feel like that's what's happening for me here. Pointy Stick of Destiny. Without the Pointy Stick of Destiny, the enemies in the mountains feel a lot tougher, which makes me think maybe I shouldn't be here yet. But whatever, the game didn't stop me. And hey, look, it works on the undead too. Anyway, I kill some natives defending their home, then try to steal a sacred artifact from them. Their priests show up to tell me I'm committing sacrilege and try to stop me. Damn, that one guy is messing me up. But it's not enough to stop the pointy stick of destiny. You shed the blood of my children on holy ground. You deserve immediate punishment. Uh-oh, looks like I angered their god. I need to kill her ancient protectors. I'm the good guy. 
Well, I killed them, and the goddess decided since I'm so good at killing everyone, I must be in the right. Plus, she's a rock. What's she gonna do? Well, she asked me to help her mountain tribes, and of course, they want me to prove my bravery and worth. You know how these mountain tribes are. They also give me the quest to challenge Itigulee's Mountaineers.name. Piece of cake. If I climb the highest mountain, I find a sorcerer who properly wrecks me if I take him head on. But no problem, AI Exploitation is my middle name. He's not so tough without his entourage, but whoa, I take that back. He takes two hits from the pointy stick of destiny. Never mind, this guy must be a big deal. Yeah, looks like... What's happening here? Whoa, I'm in a cave? It's him. Kill him. What? Okay, I'm very confused, but the nice thing about people trying to kill you is you don't have to understand their motivations or context. They're their own motivation. So, here we are in the caves! They're your typical game caves, although here, the pointy stick of destiny finally meets its match. The cave spider. This is the worst enemy in the game. They're simply a pain to attack, but if you charge in, you may as well just load your game because they'll cheese you to death with this poison spit move that momentarily incapacitates you. Look at this, I cannot even move. This is impossible to break out of. The only way to approach them is on the periphery with a faster weapon and just take your punishment. They barely even damage you, it's just a chore. I will say though, it looks like I'm getting my wish to some extent, since the caves, the sorcerer, the rock goddess, none of this is in the movie. Now the movie itself was based on a book, so maybe they're pulling some more material from that, but I'm not sure I'd give them that much credit. Anyway, we finally exit the caves and make it to the swamps. This looks pretty cool. Oh boy, a showdown! He is here. Kill him. Actually, this fight is pretty hard since I can't use my usual approach of siphoning off the enemies. Again, the sorcerer will wreck you if you get too close, but his entourage won't leave him this time. Damn, this is the first time I'm regretting not having a bow and arrow. Because, you know, shooting an enemy that can't fight back must be how they intended you to play the game. Well, it ends up not mattering because he glitches out attacking a tree. Works for me. But his bodyguards don't give up easily and even knock the pointy stick of destiny out of my hand. Yikes! Thankfully, I have a backup sword or 10 and finish them all off. And now? What do you want from us? I want Feast. Where is he? Oh! Wolfhound speaks! Wow, that makes this all worth it. That was his first spoken line in the game. I am hours and hours into this. I didn't even think he had a voice actor. And what a delivery. Shivers down the spine. I'm really happy when games have a payoff like this. And you may notice the grass is a little lagged every time the camera switches in the cutscene. I hate bugs like this, making me think I'm crazy, but this time I'm not. And we can't explore the swamp, so that means it's back through the spider cave. Ugh. Well, we make it to the exit. I guess we'll never know how we got in this cave in the first place. And on the other side is a desert. It's a very small desert. Good. Oh, and I forgot, look at the map. Now I can travel again, but the place to the south has been cut off. No explanation. This map does whatever it wants. I guess while we're wandering, we can talk about the music quick. It's all over the place. Most of it is pretty forgettable and is a little off. Like, anytime I go to the menu, it just sounds like it's in the middle of some generic action track. A few tracks are nice and fitting. And then some leave me wondering. Okay, let's bring in the church organ. Oh yeah, when I think of medieval fantasy, the first thing I think of is a saxophone. This game has too much easy listening music. I mean, just period, but especially for a fantasy game. 
Okay, so after much wandering, we get a big cutscene. It's good you come with us, Wolfhound. Mm-hmm. And we are downright spoiled with all this voice acting. Roland is dead. That's why I decided to bury the hatchet with his son, Leda Zuka, the guard of the Northern Gates. He will defend us from enemies, and my daughter will become his wife for this service. I think that guy must have at least five lines. I think that's more than any other character so far. They must have had more time for him since they didn't animate his mouth moving. Anyway, we're providing security for a political marriage. There's the beautiful bride. And wouldn't you know it, we get a caravan escort. <sighs> oh wait, what's this? Oh, so now we get a cutscene and just skip all the pointless crap. God bless you on the Eidin lands, noble child. The I don't want to hear it. Wide. So we move forward, but first they need me to go back to the river village and clean house. Because you knew that was never going to end peacefully. I'm seeing this weird flashing whenever Wolfhound takes damage here. I'm not sure if this is the game or NVIDIA's drivers. Further investigation required. That's enough, stranger. Stop it. Okay. So we return to the caravan and get a serious ambush this time. They just keep coming. Then we progress to a cutscene off in the swamps. Fight some more enemies? The usual drill. Are you hurt, Wolfhound? Yeah, that line was perfect. Let's keep going. Okay, so the game is trying to recreate scenes from the movie, but I was particularly impressed with this part. Just watch. I am not editing a thing. Here, drink this. Okay. And again! Silently take Sumka. We'll meet at the agreed place. Greel, don't let me down. Well, that was dramatic. Let's see what the old blind man has to say about this, because we haven't heard him speak yet. He has taken poison, but it is not too late. Yep. But wait! We also get a second line from Wolfhound himself. Where is our lady? Wow. Sometimes you just have to sit back and admire an artist's work. And all this takes us back to the mountains, except this time we have to check in with the caravan. This is actually getting pretty close to the end of the movie, so maybe now's the time to finish my side quest. So if I go to the exit, whoops, I can only go to the swamp this time. Okay, fine, let's backtrack to the swamp, then maybe that will act as a hub to other areas. Remember, I still don't know how the map works. Except, whoops, all that does is re-trigger the entire swamp sequence. You have to do the swamp fight all over, too. I'm sure this is a bug, but this feels pretty fatalistic. You're trapped in this area, and if you try to escape, all that happens is you go back in time 20 minutes on an escapable sequence to bring you right back here. Man. Well, goodbye side quest. I'm not gonna lose sleep for missing those. Let's finish this. I catch up with the main group, and I guess this is the final battle. I've already been here before. This isn't the natural arch. Oh well. After taking care of that, it's onward to my nemesis. Blooper? Is it you? Yes, it's me. Whatever, let me run away from your guards so I can kill them. And here we are at the final showdown. Now there's a trick to this. If you try to attack him, he'll cheese you to death. I can't do anything here. I'm as good as dead. The trick is to get close enough for him to come to you. Boom! Three hits! Me hitting you twice and you hitting the ground. Stop, Wolfhound. Take charge first. You should close the gates and destroy it. Throw it into the nether. Hurry before it's too late. Another perfect take. Wolfhound, don't do it. Look at your sword. You should kill Lucian with it. It's a rare chance. You should not waste it. But you can kill Lucian between the worlds. Hurry, you warrior. Oh, so we have a choice here. This has multiple endings? Didn't expect that in a movie-based game. Okay, so let's play it safe first and close the gate. So here is the ending to Wolfhound. Yeah. Uh. Game completed. Press OK to exit. I don't even get a music thing. Damn, that is lame. Okay, let's not panic. We have multiple endings. Maybe this was the rushed one. Let's do this again. Let's stop Lucien. I don't think this was in the movie. We have a portal or something? 
Okay, this definitely wasn't in the movie. I guess that's Lucienne. And the pointy stick of destiny does not work on her. Never fear, I have a special weapon just for this. Let's go. All right, so the pattern is you hit her a few times, then she disappears. Repeat, nothing too crazy. But once we get her down to half health... Take my power and use it. Nothing will be impossible for you. Take my power and you'll never be sorry, believe me. Believe you, huh? Sure. So what should we pick here? I'll give you one guess. What should we do here? That's right, remain silent. Hell yes. <sighs> So we continue the same pattern, finish her off, and... Uh... Game completed. You may continue the game after the plot is finished. Do you wish to continue? Uh, no? Oh my god, this is so lame. Alright, I guess we have one more. Let's pick the bad ending and side with evil. I'm sure that's gonna go well. This is really odd having a choice like this. In the movie, you get the impression Wolfhound doesn't have a bad bone in his body. I'm not against multiple endings, but his character would never do this. Okay, here we go. Side with evil. Jesus Christ! Well, that's what you get for siding with evil. Ugh. Wolfhound, how are you? Not good. It's not the Wolfhound. Luciana has eaten his soul. Game completed. Wait, I can keep playing? Yeah, okay, what's that gonna look like? Wow, so now I can fight all my old allies. I've seen endings where the good guy turns bad, but not ones where you can go back and kill everyone who helped you. Oh, and look, I can leave the map now. What if I go to the swamp? Okay, I get the cutscene. Yeah, and now they're trying to kill me retroactively back in time. This is crazy. So, that's Requital. It had a lot of things I've never seen before, probably for good reason. It's not complete garbage, but it didn't change my mind on movie-based games any. Okay, if somebody makes a game based on the Ian Flux series, I'll be all over that. But that's probably too obscure now for that to happen. Though who knows, somebody made a game on Manos The Hands of Fate. That wasn't exactly a blockbuster. They made a game based on the movie, based on the series of Ian Flux. But I don't know, that's not giving me a good vibe. You know how sometimes you make a copy of a copy, it's not quite as sharp as, well, the original. Yeah, I think I'm done with movie-based games. Bye! Okay, I can't help myself. Let's hear that line again. Where is our lady? Yeah, move over, Conan.